Hello friends, this video on visualizing shapes part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So based on whatever we have learned so far, let us quickly look at some of the questions. Question number one. Can a polyhedron have for its faces three triangles, four triangles, a square and four triangles? So let us analyze each of the options one by one. A polyhedron with its faces three triangles. Now even if you think of three triangles, no matter whatever way you try to arrange those three triangles, you would see that they will never meet at a point to form a closed solid structure to make a polyhedron. So it is definitely not possible that a polyhedron with three triangles can be formed. So this is not possible. A polyhedron with four triangles, well that is possible Okay, before that, let me talk about this. So when you talk about three triangles, you might form the three sides of a polyhedron, but what about the base? The base will remain empty. So even if you make a polyhedron, it will be like an empty thing from below. So you can actually form a pyramid where the base of the pyramid is missing. You just have the three sides or the three side faces of the pyramid. Whereas if you have four triangles, then you can definitely form a polyhedron. That's because now you also have the base. So when you have the base as a triangle, so that completes the structure of a polyhedron. A square and four triangles, that is also possible. With this, you can make a square pyramid because the square will form the base and the four triangles would form the four side faces of the polyhedron. So this would be a triangular pyramid. So in the second case, you will be able to form a triangular pyramid. In the third case, you will form a square pyramid. And in the first case, what happens? You form a partial pyramid where the base is absent. Question number two. How are prisms and cylinders alike? How are pyramids and cones alike? So first let us look at a prism and a cylinder. How do you think they are similar? So looking at these two pictures, can you feel that a cylinder is like a circular prism? So it is just that like in case of a prism, you have the top and the base, the top and the bottom surfaces congruent, right? So this triangle and this triangle, they are the top and bottom surfaces and they are congruent. So the same is true for cylinder also. The top and the bottom surfaces are circles and they are congruent. So it is just that in this case, the top and bottom surfaces are polygons and here the top and bottom surfaces are circles. So that's the only difference. So therefore, we can say that a cylinder is like a circular prism. Similarly, when you look at a pyramid and a cone, again, sim similar kind of uh, similarity. Here, in case of a cone, the base is a circle and from all the points of the circle, there arises line which meets at a common point on the top. Similarly, here, the base is not a circle, but the base is a polygon. And from each vertex of the polygon arises one one triangle and all those triangles meet at a point on the top. So both the structures are quite similar. It is just that the cone is like a circular pyramid because instead of the polygon base, you have a circular base. So that's how we can say that a cone is like a circular pyramid and that is how they both are similar. Similarly, a cylinder can be thought of as a circular prism. Question number three. Is a square prism same as a cube? So what do we mean by a square prism? Square prism would mean that the bottom and the top surfaces, which are normally polygons, so those polygons are squares. So that's a square prism. So let us start with a triangular prism. So in a triangular prism, what happens? The top and the bottom surfaces are triangles, right? What happens in a rectangular prism? The top and the bottom surfaces are rectangles. All other surfaces are polygons. Similarly, in triangular prism also, all other surfaces are parallelograms. Now let us come to a square prism. So in a square prism, the top and the bottom surfaces would be a square. But the moment the top and bottom surfaces are square, how about the other surfaces? So the other surfaces can be parallelograms. So if you want, there is a possibility that the other surfaces are squares so possibility number one is 
the other surfaces that means the surfaces other than the top and the bottom surfaces so the other surfaces can be squares so if the other surfaces are square that means what did we get we got a cube but there is another option that is option number two so option number two is this that the other surfaces are rectangles so it is also possible that the top and the bottom surfaces are square but all other four surfaces they are rectangles so in that case we will get a cuboid so that means a square prism now both of these are square prism so both the top and the bottom one they are both square prism so a square prism can be a cube or a cuboid so it is not necessarily a cube always question number four verify euler's formula for this solid so look at this solid so for in order to verify euler's formula first you need to find out the number of faces edges and vertices for this solid so let's calculate the faces so the top face is a 1 2 3 4 5 a polygon with five sides what is that so the top surface is a pentagon right so this is surface number 1 how many other surfaces do you have so since this is a pentagon that says since this has five surfaces so there would be five side surfaces also like for each side of this pentagon there is one more surface right so the, let's call this surface number two three four five and six which are not visible to us so there would be a surface five and there would also be a surface six so this five and six will be towards the back side which we can't see maybe somewhat like this if you join it like this so maybe this side would be five this side would be six so total we have got six surfaces plus there would be a base surface like this right so the base surface so total at one top surface plus five side surfaces plus one base surface so total seven faces how many edges one two three four five similarly five edges at the base so total ten plus one two three four and five so that means total 15 edges how many vertices so five vertices on the top similarly five vertices at the bottom so total 10 vertices so now as per Euler's formula f plus v minus e this value should come out to be 2 let's see f is 7 v is 10 and e is 15 so this is 17 minus 15 which is equal to 2 so therefore we see that the Euler's formula holds true for this solid which proves that this solid is a polyhedron Question number 5. Can a polyhedron have 10 faces, 20 edges and 15 vertices? So we will have to see if it satisfies the Euler's formula, then a polyhedron with these many faces, edges and vertices is possible. If not, then it is not possible. So how many faces are there? 10. How many edges? 20. And how many vertices? 15. So as per Euler's formula, F plus V minus E is equal to 10 plus 15 minus 20 which is equal to 25 minus 20 that is equal to 5 so in this case this is 5 and not equal to 2 therefore it is not possible to have a polyhedron with these many faces vertices and edges so it is not possible so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on visualizing solid shapes would have helped you. So practice more problems. If you have any questions, you can ask all your doubts in the ask question section of exam for your website. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.